Blog Talk Radio. I would like, uh, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. The accident was over a year ago. The second woman has been elected president. The twelfth planet has been named in the solar system. The last wild polar bear has died. I slept through it all. Here for my waking. He called it a beginning. He said it was good. I think he may have thought that anything I did was good. Welcome to Transition Radio with your host, Mark Angelo Cummings. The show for trans folks by trans folks here to let your voice be heard. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Transition Radio. My name is Mark Angelo Cummings, and I am your host for this evening. Tonight's show is being broadcast live from the land of enchantment, no other than Silver City, New Mexico. But before I start the broadcast, I want to take a moment to thank my sponsor, TheBreastWomenStore.com. Everything you could possibly imagine to enhance your feminization needs. And the fabulous Dr. Vartan Magdalosian is an amazing artist, a facial feminization specialist based out of Jupiter, Florida. Please visit the website and click on the banner. They'll take you directly to their website and please support them and tell them Transition Radio sent you. I want to make a quick announcement before I get... uh, the actual show on the road. And remember, guys, you're welcome to call in. The number is 646-716-6895. Again, that's 646-716-6895. Uh, got this email from a producer of the channel TLC. There is a show called Yes to the Dress. They actually saw one of the pieces that Daily Mail did on us and were very inspired by the whole story. So they decided that they want to welcome transgender couples who are getting married to be part of their show. Now, it reads, um, get to the dress, Atlanta. I wanted to get the word out that we're happy to work with transgender engaged couples that may be on the hunt for that perfect wedding gown. It would be a pleasure and honor to share the love story in a positive and uplifting way, all while helping dreams come true by finding that bride, that perfect wedding dress. So please have anyone interested contact me to Brandy, that's B-R-A-N-D-Y, at NorthSouth.TV. Again, that's Brandy, B-R-A-N-D-Y, at NorthSouth.TV. Thank you for your time, and her number is area code 404-538-3094. Again, that's 404-538-3094, Kirshner on North-South Production, and her name is Brandy. So at least Jess and I motivated uh, this show to actually bring in transgender individuals who want to tie the knot and help the bride find that perfect dress. Well, tonight I'm going to be speaking about several issues that are a bit controversy, as usual, but I like to get people to think outside the box. Not to argue, but to really start looking deep within a lot of these problems that we are facing in our community. It's easy to just hide your your head inside the ground like an ostrich and say, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to see it, this is not me, you're wrong. But you know what, the more and more I have interaction with transgender folks, the more and more I see that there are a lot more problems than just gender dysphoria. Now, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We have to realize that the reason we are the way we are is because there has been a sort of hormonal mix-up that happened during age gestation in our mother's womb. There had been a neurological impairment that set in due to whatever chemistry, you know, everyone has sometimes stress, sometimes it's medication, sometimes it's just the chemicals in the food and the air supply and the water that we're drinking. We don't know, but there is a massive exodus that's taken place. And a lot of transgender individuals, including me, I'm not putting myself outside the box. Look, I'm I'm not the most perfect person in the world. I have OCD. I have issues dealing with uh, crowds and people. I have to prepare myself to do this. And people think, oh, you know, this guy's got a mane in the shade. There's a lot of envy towards me. But they don't realize that I also have a cross to bear. No one's perfect. 
But I truly believe, and I'm speaking from experience here, that us transgender individuals have a little bit more than just gender dysphoria. Now, some of these um, particular, uh, what's the word I want to look at? I don't want to call them disorder or disease, but things that we are stricken with because of the improper neurological basing that took place um, could be anxiety. We, we have lots and lots and lots of anxiety. I know I do. I know that when I'm around people, if I'm not ready for it, I suffer major anxiety and I try to keep this under control. Anger issues. A lot of us have a lot of anger issues. I've got them. You've got them. We all got them. But I think because of our isolation, because of the years of frustration, we built all this anger inside of us. And this is nothing to be ashamed of, but this is something that we need to look into deeper. And we need to get these gender specialists to truly look into these issues for us and not just give us that little magic pill and say, okay, here's your hormones, now transition. There is major issues that come with transitioning and using hormones and all sorts of stuff. It's not a magic pill that just automatically one morning you wake up and you're all cured. No, there's more to it than just gender dysphoria. Needing approval. A lot of us in this community are constantly looking for approval, and we see it online, and we see the, the constant battles between one another, and I'm right, and you're wrong. Perfect example. I made a video the other day, trans rant, or man trans, or something rant. It's on my YouTube uh, page, and I've got this guy from the Netherlands that, I mean, I have never in my lifetime heard somebody speak so, it's like a truck driver. Truck driver. Every other word he uses is the F word. And he tells me to shut up and he tells me to go kill myself. Now, the only thing I could think of in being a medical professional and very, very well versed in the uh, men's issues that this young man has been told this time and time again, go kill yourself. So what does he do? He mimics what and telling him so he's now trying to bully others in the trans community. I've had reports left, right, and center trans individuals that are being bullied by their own brothers and sisters, telling them things like, go kill yourself. You're not trans enough. You cis scum, this, that, and the other. We need to stop this. We need to really realize and look within and find out, hey, there is something else going on here. And again, there is no shame in admitting there's something wrong. Without awareness, there can't be healing, and we can't cure ourselves. And a lot of people think, well, transition, I'll be cured. You know what? Guess what? It doesn't happen that way. That would be a ever-ending beautiful story of fairy tale, but it doesn't. We all have bigger issues to think of, and we need to talk about this stuff, and we need to get these gender specialists to realize that, yes, there is something bigger here. You know, it's not just all of a sudden, voila, wave that little magic wand, take a couple of doses of hormones, and you're all better now, or cut, snip, add, tick, whatever. No. There's deeper, deeper stuff. We're being bullied by others, so we bully others as well, and, and we see we see it now. It's like this major trend, you know, and and especially I'm seeing it in the younger trans generation. This is something that we need to talk about. This is something that everyone should really get involved in because we think, oh, that's not my business. I'm not going to get involved. I live my life in peace. I don't want to, I don't want any part of this. Well, you know what? Don't step in. It's only going to get worse. Again, guys, call in 646-716-6895. I want to talk about what I've read, because I do a lot of reading, and obviously I have to do this kind of reading so that I could have topics to talk about and material to talk about on the show. I've read that there are two kinds of male to female transsexuals. Now, I'm not the most authority on anything, so please interject at any time. Call in, share your experience, tell me I'm wrong. You know, share what you believe. I think that's the way to growth as a community. That's the only way we're really going to actually expand our horizon. The two types are auto, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, autogenific, wait, gen, or autogenific, or something like that. You know, nature again, correct me, because I have no clue how it's pronounced. And there is a transsexualism and homosexual male to female. So there's two, I guess. One that um, is... Basically, the way I understand it is into themselves dressing up as female and they get pleasure out of this and they hate men. Okay, pretty much what I've read and what I've seen. And uh, a lot of the information that I'm basing this on is from Dr. Blanchard. And uh, he's, his followers believe all genophilic or genophilics. Uh, bisexual and asexual transsexuals are what he calls cross dreamers which means they get sexually turned on by the thought of being a woman. Now, I know a lot of you might say that's BS, blah, blah, but, you know, obviously there have been studies done on this. And, you know, there, again, there is no shame in that. I mean, there, 
Yeah. We as humans, we have all sorts of attractions, fetishes, desires. You know, some people really get off on eating food and they eat so much that they gain weight. Other people smoke, other people drink, other people take drugs, other people just sit in front of a TV all day because, you know, we're human. And I believe that the reason that we are the way we are is because of the unnatural life that we have been taught to live. Remember back in the day, and I'm sure you don't remember, but I'm making that as a general uh, comment here. We were very active individuals. We hunted our own food. We, you know, we we didn't sit around all day or be in front of a computer all day with artificial lights and artificial food. So, us, and we need to become aware of this, and we need to talk instead of just keeping it under a rug. The uh, I'm going to call it AG because I can't pronounce it, are the ones creating all the issues in my belief. I mean, I see a lot of really angry individuals that many of them don't even remotely think of ever transitioning completely, but they just get in front of a computer and they just start invading forums, groups, and just start spewing hatred and, and start fighting with everyone. Um, and I don't want to generalize because, again, you know, no two people are alike. Uh, but I I found that a lot of these really angry trans individuals fit this description. Now, those who are uh, AG is strong enough that they experience no other directed sexual feelings identify as asexual. A lot of them don't even like to have sex. It's just all about getting dressed up as females with the nails and, you know, the makeup and whatever else they do, you know, stand in front of a mirror, oh, look at me, you know, and look what I can do with all that stuff. And to me, finally, a common aspect of the AG is the erotic fantasy of being admired in the female persona by another person. And we see this a lot. And again, I'm not judging it. There is absolutely nothing wrong. That is, again, one type of transsexual. And Blanchard, uh, Blanchard uh, also said that the non-homosexual transsexuals are motivated by the AG. That is, non-homosexual transsexuals experience erotic arousal at the idea of becoming a woman. And these arousal motivates them to become women. Hypothize that romantic attachment can play an important role in some cases. It is probable, however, that such attachment is usually preceded by substantial erotic arousal to the idea of being a woman. I mean, this is very interesting stuff that I've read. And could it be true? Could it be false? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if there are other studies out there regarding this. I am sure that there are individuals that do fit this description to the T, not to say that every transgender individual who identifies as lesbian or not attracted to men or not attracted to whatever fit this, but you know, I was hoping that you guys would call in and, and kind of give me a little bit of your input regarding this. There will be between one and two million autogenophiliacs in the U.S. alone on a global scale, 1% would equal 25 million men. That's 2, 5 billion adult men. And that is conservative estimate. If this really is the case, autogenophilia becomes one of the largest cover-ups in human history. Now that is, to me, pretty interesting, folks. I mean, seriously. You know, and, and again, how... How freely are we to talk about these things? You know, it's the same with how freely are we to talk about other issues that actually we as transgender individuals face. And not to say, I hate this word, cisgender individuals don't suffer from all these other things, anxiety, anger issues, needing approval. I think humanity in general does. But I find that in the trans community, we are being faced with a lot of this stuff. And... I think we need to help one another instead of destroying one another the way that I see it done online, the way I see it done. I've been attacked personally because I, I tend to bring controversial topics to the table. And I believe that it's very important to do this because without discussion, there can never be any type of growth. 
It's like right now, I'm opening this up to everyone so they can call in and discuss the matter. But no, instead, people just rather want to put the shows up on YouTube and sit there and and just totally attack me. And uh, there's no... There's no humanized conversation, which is what I'm trying to create here, folks. I'm trying to, for people to to grow and learn about themselves. I find that many transgender individuals really do not know one single thing about themselves. And that's pretty sad because you figure you we go to these gender specialists to help figure things out for us. You know, I, I see what's happening now that you go to the gender specialist and you tell the gender specialist what they want to hear. And it's almost like a game so that you get your letter so that you go on hormones so you can go get your surgeries. But are we really looking into the deep issues that we are facing? Now, we could say, well, the deep issues that we're facing stems from being transgender, from not being able to express ourselves. But that could be the kind of theory, like who came first, the chicken or the egg? I think, as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, it has a lot to do with the neurological bathing that took place, uh, chemicals that irritated our nervous system that creates a lot of these problems. I know a lot of trans individuals who suffer dramatically from, you know, attention deficit disorder, obsessive compulsive behavior, we suffer from anxiety, you know, not being able to handle stress, frustration, we get frustrated very easily. Many of us are also in the spectrum of autism, which is, you know, I've had shows about that in the past and I've actually had a guest, Jack Ory, who uh, is also autistic and does things to try to help the brothers and sisters with the same issue. I once had a show that talked about, I think pretty much it's 50-50 MTF and FDM who are in the spectrum of either Asperger or some form of autism. And this kind of makes it hard for us to actually interact with people freely. I know that I almost have to do a little ritual to be able to be around people and I have to be ready for that. I can't always, you know, find myself easily to be able to interact and socialize. And I find that that's something that has been with me since I was a child. It didn't go away after transition. My OCD didn't go away after transition. So that's what I'm trying to tell a lot of younger folks. You know, they, a lot of them say, well, I just want to die. The worst thing in the world is not feeling comfortable in my body. And you know what? There are many, many other worse things in life. I understand that that's what's worse for you now because that's where you're at. But I can guarantee you that after you transition and you feel totally aligned, for those of you who get the full SRS or not, those issues are still going to be there. Trust me. You know, I've transitioned back in 2003, and things are still here, folks. They have not dis you know, unfortunately, I look in the mirror and I like what I see, but this is not about an thing. This is a lot to do with internal stuff that we need to work through. And I think the gender specialists need to get on board with this because a happy transition is not just about cosmetics. It's not just about hormones. It's not just about getting your ID change. A happy transition is dealing with a lot of the problems that we are being faced with. Now, I want to talk a little bit about misgendering, and I find a lot of things on Facebook. People get all upset because, again, you know, if you're a, if you want to be considered a female, they serve you. If you want to be considered a male, they men you. And you, know, we, I believe, in my opinion, we have to actually have a little compassion for the world. We have to also realize that if what the person sees is the gender that you're trying to get away from and you still have remnants of that gender, it's not their fault. We can't get upset at that. If you lived your life X amount of years as that gender and all of a sudden you can't just wave a magic wand and you want it to disappear, you're still that person. Wanting to or not, we are still that person. We choose to present ourselves as something else, and that's fine. But let's not get mad at the world. Let's not get mad at ourselves. Let's let's try to be a little more understanding and not look at this as such a curse, because this is, in my view, a gift. 
we have been given the gift to walk life on both sides of the fence. Create a beautiful journey. Take this and say, oh my God, this is the worst thing in the world. Like many of the trans people that have interaction online say, you know, they'd rather be dead. They'd rather get... And I'm saying, oh my God, forgive them, fathers, for they know not what they say. And I'm not religious, but I mean, that's that's how I feel, you know. And it it's sad because there are more to life. There is more to life than just gender. You know, another famous line is, I was born in the wrong body. And you know what? I used that line, too, when I first transitioned. As the years progressed, I realized, no, I was not born in the wrong body. There was nothing wrong with my body. There was nothing wrong with me. I just chose to transition. I just chose to make myself feel more comfortable in my expression. You know, I, I was for 37 years of my life, and I'm still a female. I just transitioned to look and feel my masculine side so I could have that balance between my yin and my yang. Now, many of you may not agree with me, and that's okay. I'm not, you know, this is not about, it's not about who's wrong and who's right. You know, being accused of, of creating false information. We all have our stories, and we all have the way we feel. And it's important to have acceptance. It's important to have self-love. Because all you're doing is destroying yourself and those around you. I'm not the enemy, folks. I'm here to kind of be the devil's advocate, to help, help people realize certain things, you know. And, again, I just wish many of you would communicate without arguing, would express yourselves without throwing mud or slinging mud all over the place, which is what I see that happens a lot in the community. Okay, we got eight minutes left, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a subject that has nothing to do with being transgender, which I'm also going to start doing, um, gearing the show towards other things besides trans issues. Um, many of you may not be aware, and many of you may think, well, it's some speedies, but there is talk about that we're going to get chip. You know, it's not that's the stuff I have read and inspire from the time that I was little. I mean, there's cameras everywhere. They've changed our IDs that our IDs and passports have a chip in them. A system where they can track you, your computer, everything. I mean, there, there's no, really, you have no privacy whatsoever. Now you say, well, what, what would be the gain of this RFID chip? Well, if the government does not want to lose control and you're seeing that more and more people are getting antsy and we're in the verge of a revolution, what would be the best way to control your cattle? Yeah, because that's what we are, literally, cattle. You know, you're given a birth certificate and a social security when you're born, you know, the corporation are tagging their cattle. But they can't really keep track of you with your social security, you know, or your um, birth certificate, so they have to do something to make sure they keep their cattle in line, and what best way would that be to put an RFID chip in you so they could track you. Um, they could even go as far as eliminating all sorts of currency, and through this chip, that's how you get paid, and that's how you pay for everything. And the way that they would justify that, that'll be a lot easier to keep the illegals away because that's what they're using. You know, oh, people bad from the border crossing over. We've got to have a way of controlling this so they can't come here or they won't be able to come here because they won't be able to eat because they won't have a chip. But you Americans will be able to eat with your chip and you'll be able to get paid through this chip. What better plan? I know it sounds crazy. I know it may sound bizarre. But you know what? It's not that far-fetched. It's a diabolical plan, but do you think our government really cares about us? We're just the number. We're just cattle, bringing them money, paying off their debt. Well, folks, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for this evening since no one has called in, and I am going to end the show with one of my songs that I wrote a while back called Free Me from my Enslave album, 
please stay tuned for Thursday's show. I've got Tom Moore, amazing story, great friend. I try to bring on more of my trans brothers on the show to share our stories because trans men need to be visible. Trans men need to, to be out there. Love the trans women, but I think it's time for the changing of the guard for trans men to be in the media, for trans men to be in the front row and speak their minds as well. Well, guys, I love you, but remember to always love yourselves, too. Trans man on a mission, signing out, tune in. If you have any questions for me, I'll answer them on the other show. Ask the trans man. Love you guys, but remember to love yourselves, too. Good evening. Well...